California in the 70s was very different than I think it is present day. So I felt, I always felt like the story would make more sense in a in a true small in a small southern town, especially because it's so it's religious, it's supposed to be a really religious town. So um, I thought, unless I'm going to do it as a seventies period piece, I have to change the setting to something that feels more quaint and small town today. And so that was Hattiesburg. Um, I didn't change. I mean, you know, I changed some things, condensed some characters, added some drama, there's certain things that aren't in the book, like the sister, missing sister is not in the book, the parents being split up is not in the book, um, and in the book, all of the characters except Randy, pretty much Randy and his family, are white, like they live in an all-white town. So, uh, let's hear from our actors, tell us how you prepared for this role, and um, introduce yourselves to the audience, and give us a little background on the characters. Hello, my name is Tori Lamar. Um, essentially, I started out with Todd Watterson just by looking at the script. I didn't read the book because I didn't want the book to mesh into what the script was saying. So I had no idea what the book uh, was talking about. I just knew what the script was. But basically, I started out uh, at UNCG, uh, learning my craft and everything. Yes. That, oh, it's uh, University of North Carolina, Greensboro. Where, uh, sorry, I should have said that first. Uh, I'm learning there to, you know, link and prepare with uh, the script What? I'm sorry. So, Tori was is in college, uh, finishing up his theater degree. My first film, I'm sorry. And we were doing uh, auditions. <laughs> in Atlanta, and he drove down from North Carolina to audition for the, for the movie, and, and then landed a, a role. So he's brand new. Are you finished yet? No, I have one more year. Yeah. Woo! So he's definitely one to watch. I'm one to watch. And uh, Dee, <laughs> tell us how you came to the film. And your yes, um, I never told you this, but uh, I actually heard about the film from uh, someone you were looking at to play Randy didn't choose him but uh, <laughs> that's how I found out about it and um, we were at you know we were at a diner and we were, oh my gosh I just auditioned for this film and said, oh, no, no. there's a part in it you could probably play you need to tell your agent and I was like okay I will and you know I had her reach out reach out you know they sent the sides over and I actually read for both of the um, the characters Leslie and Crystal, and they said they liked me for Leslie. So I was like, okay. And I, reading the sides immediately, I knew I wanted to be a part of it because, you know, as a recording artist, I've also done reality TV. But a lot of people don't know about my theater background, and I was really looking for a project that would allow me to show that range and, you know, be on a platform to be taken seriously. So thank you guys for taking a chance on me, and you know, I'm able to you know, grow with this film. Well, I'm a producer, and I always look out for the producers. I know Patrick, your producer, Isaiah is, but also Carol, and Shine, and Keith Brown. Can you tell us what were the, the joys and the obstacles of bringing this story to screen, how we can support the film, and of course, your, your Twitter hashtag. There were no obstacles. Um, uh, I think the biggest thing is is that uh, Patrick's work has always been too. It's gone into the different things he's done about his art, the skinny, all of his work, you know, his art, his movie, 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 and Keith was a real part of the movie because he was there on a shoot and it happened every day. So yeah, I mean, the joyous part of seeing it on screen now and letting everybody witness what I read originally and was so drawn to with the script. Uh, the obstacles were just the normal things, locations and whatnot. We had a few different things because of our subject matter that made it a little tricky with certain places where we shot. Uh, How'd you get in that church? That was Patrick got that one. That was my high school auditorium. Because that's the only place in the West End. No, it's not the only place in the West End. I didn't really try to get a church. I just thought, you know, 
I mean, I'm from there. I know. I just knew better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I could have done it, but out of respect for the, the institution, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I wanted to try to find a church that would close for sale or something like that and do it, but I didn't do it. I mean, the high school, the city just kind of opened the doors to everything. So we moved away to the like beautiful big historical theaters and all kinds of city buildings and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. As far as distribution, we are searching for a fierce distributor. We're close on finding a few. Um, but you can support it socially in the meantime on social media. We're on Twitter at, at Black, but Black is BLK. So BLK Berg the Film is our Twitter. And just tell your friends and support it and let us know your feedback online and whatnot. We'd be happy to hear it. And Phil will be screening this coming Sunday at Frame Live in uh, San Francisco. So if you can share it with anybody out there, have them come. I mean, the more people we have come, the more people we have to talk about it. Um, I mean, I think it's a really important story. Happy hard with God as well. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Happy hard with God, the people of color, uh, and I think of Pariah and the incredibly, Pariah and the incredibly true adventures of two girls in love. Is this like the first young black man coming of age uh, story? I think so. I think it is. Yeah, I, really I did like my little cinema studies. Yeah. I couldn't find. I you know. can't. I couldn't tell you another one. No. Well, well, thank you for telling the story with so much love and honesty and amazing music. Amazing, beautiful, beautiful shot. I love the line, never disrespect God for being ashamed of his work. I hope that everybody will carry that in their hearts and that this film and these filmmakers. And do we have time to take questions? Okay, who's got Sing out, Louise. I know your name's out, Louise. Uh, yeah, no. I, he asked about the script, and I optioned the the book before I started. No, I um, I think I wrote that first draft of the script when I was still in film school. I was finishing up my film degree in Mississippi, and uh, that's when I wrote the first draft in 1994. So then I moved to LA to start graduate film school at the University of Southern California, and there was a gay bookstore in West Hollywood called The Different Light that sadly is not there anymore. But um, I would go in there, and I noticed they had signed copies of Blackbird on the, on the counter. 